on this week's episode of Devil's Trap Podcast. It's about the love. From Smut and Chops to Meg's DL. Let's do this. Welcome to this week's episode of Devil's Trap Podcast. I am Diana. And I'm Liz. I'm trying so hard not to sneeze right now. <laughs> it's just, as soon as like, it just happens, like, oh no. I want to. Oh no. <laughs> well, this week we're going to talk about season eight, episode 17, Goodbye Stranger While Liz Sneezes. Uh, oh. But uh, in the meantime, uh, what have you been up to, Liz? I don't even know anymore. That's so many things. And they've all just like blurred together and just this one kind of like spiral of signatures and contracts. Like I probably shouldn't say this because legal shit, but I don't even know what I'm signing anymore half the time. Like there's just like an email and then like someone who I trust is like, or said hopefully I trust. Really trust. So, like to sign this. Yeah. Yeah, and then I got yelled at because I used an I was using an insurance broker to try and get some of my personal insurance squared away, and I should have just gone through the marketplace because I didn't need anybody to like tell me how to do that. But I thought I did, and then I was just like, oh. And then like they chose something, and I started going through things, and they got really mad that I filled out my application by myself because they're supposed to do that for me. And then like her assistant like got on the phone with me and reviewed it with me to make sure I didn't fuck it up. And she was like, "Oh, this is all correct." And I was like, "Cool, I thought so. Like it's not this isn't hard." And like you were on my shit to do, so like the button came up, and I was just like, "Well, I'm gonna kick." like apply for this stuff and and she yeah. was like well you should have gotten the dental insurance like that's not really worth it and like it's worth something i have paid so much money for my dental work bitch like you don't even know i need yeah. this fuck off yeah. like but yeah. she was still a nice lady and i like i guess what happens though if you do it yourself then you can take the broker out of the equation mm. and then she don't get paid and right. she was like, and she was like, and she did all the work, but I wanted to be like, but did she? Because like, but yeah, really? I mean, she did put a PowerPoint presentation together, sort of. So, I mean, like there was that, but I also she a good PowerPoint. Googled, like I saw those, I saw that, like the same thing that she put together when I went and checked the marketplace out by myself. And I was like, oh. But she did explain some things, and, there's, and I probably made a choice I would not have made without her. And so I was like, yeah, of course, like, I want you to get paid. No, I don't want you to do this stuff for me, because that seems really fucking inefficient. Yeah. If I can just, like, directly, like, doot, doot, like, that saves, like, I know you want to get paid, but why? It doesn't really make sense. Work. You're good with people. You're a people person. So, people person. Um, so that's just one of the many, like, bureau, bureau, I've just been in bureaucracy, like, hell. Like, bureaucratic hell. Bureaucratic hell. Like, I've got, like, letters. So you, you know, people try and mooch off of, like, comptroller lists. Like, when you, like, deal with stuff at the Texas comptroller's office, like, I get, like, like all this mail, like, oh, we can help you with your business, lady. And I'm like, who the fuck are you? But, like, you're just, oh, yeah. like, fuck hollows them so i went out to the woods to go get some some peace of mind because if i did it i was i don't know what was going to happen so uh i went to palmetto state park and I don't, have you ever been there mm -hmm. so it. it's oh uh, yeah it's it's one of the texas state parks it is a little bit outside of gonzalez if you know where that is oh, yeah. if you don't know where gonzalo is a slight a slightly bigger town would be luling is right by there uh, mm -hmm. and they are also expanding the buckies. So the buckies that's out there that used to be one of the smaller buckies is yeah. getting built into the giant buckies. And I'm not sure, but it was going to be the same. It looks at least the same size as like the large one in New Braunfels. I don't know if it's going to match the Tennessee size one, but we may have like an even bigger buckies. But so at present there was two buckies. 
like right Ooh, next to each other, buckies. there was a double buckies, and like I feel like that's like a like I don't know what like a, cap- like a, rainbow. Like a capitalism rainbow. I don't know. Just like look at all our products, all our well branded marketing. You don't Beaver know why you, for need, days. you don't know why you need this trash can with a sticker label on it, but you do. But you definitely. Or at least and your friend does, and so you bought it for your friend. They had so many all. swimsuits that were actually really kind of cute, and they With had the like them. Bucky pool noodles. And I was like, I'm gonna have a pool soon. Like, should I get Bucky's pool noodles? Anyway, so um, I went to Bucky's. So it was Belmont, so that's <laughs> that's also near the the state park. So the state park is like. They have a bunch of different trails. Uh, there's a cute little lake in there, and it's all near the San Marcos River. It is called palmettos because the dwarf palmettos grow throughout there. And it's, if you've never seen, like, it looks, they look like little baby, like, not like palm trees, but like the palm fronds. And so yeah. almost like a yucca plant a little bit, you know? So, but there's just like valleys and like fields of them, like in like That's surrounded awesome. by swamps and stuff. It's really cool. Yeah. I see that. Yeah, and like I like went down like a swamp trail, and that was really cool. And like it was swampy, but not too swampy. And but I'm like on the lookout for like snakes. Like as soon as I get there, I'm like, I've just had it in my head, and I was like, I know, like I'm gonna see some. <laughs> like I just, I just in my brain, I'm like I don't know why, like it's just fixed in there. And I watched like some of this. So this lady had this video about anxiety, and she tells a story about. This chick was, like, so scared of, like, seeing a bear in the woods. It was, like, all she was thinking about. It was ruining her time. And then, like, she finally, like, sees the bear. And then she's, like, oh, it's not a big deal. And she's, like, oh, like, so, like, the danger was, like, a perceived danger, not a real danger, right? So I'm thinking about this as a trying not to, just trying to enjoy my day and not be, like, snakes. But, like, everywhere you go, like, this place is just, like, here on this side, like, we really like this rattlesnake. It's so cool. Like it is not supposed. Like it's in no other part of Texas, but here, and that's why we think it's so mm-hmm. cool. Like it's usually only on yeah. the East Coast, but like it's in the swamp. Isn't that great? And I'm like, no. Why are you proud of this? Like, don't make this rattlesnake like more proud than it is, right? And so, like, I'm going through the like, and I'm just like communing with like the trees. I'm like, okay, like I'm gonna like hug you and take your energy or like whatever. But like, there's just like all sorts of like little fun like wood things happening right like there's all these butterflies everywhere and they're like eating each other and they're like all these like worms that are like all the fuzzy worms are out right now yeah. so it's like all like there was a bunch of the black fuzzy worms and then there was these other like ones that are like they're like uh like an off-white and they have like two little horns in the front and two little horns in the back that are supposed to look like 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 thorns so predators yeah. are like I want to eat you. Like, you got thorns, but Julie's just like, ha ha, it's just my little antenna. And I'm just my butt antenna. Yeah. So, and it is like, yeah, so those are everywhere. A butt antenna? Yeah. Yeah. Antenna and butt antenna. But, so, like, those are really great. But then, like, it's, then there's like, I go, I'm like, okay, like, we're going to go, like, walk by the river. And it's like, I love the San Marcos River. I used to, like, paddle down all the time and hang out in that water. Like, for some reason, I was less terrified by snakes when I was an undergrad, probably because I was, like, 18 and invincible. I'm like, what? Like, you know, like, <laughs> so, but I, I love this river, you know, but everywhere, like, they're like, oh, look, here is this trail. This trail is named after the rattlesnake. Like, I'm not going on that trail. Like, wh- why? Why? Like, no. stop, stop that naming like, that like a trap. shit. That sounds like a, a trap. trap, right? They told a you. Trap. They told you this is like the, where the snakes the, you named it. Like I'm not. It's like one of the snakes like coerced somebody into making that. Come on, like it'll be, like it'll just be fun, you know. Be fun, yeah. So you, know, I go like I'm, so I'm going to go down this one trail. I'm going to go down the San Marcos Trail. So this one one trail is called. And like if you enter it on one side, there's a sign that says watch out for snakes and i'm like i'm just gonna go the other way and i know like eventually i meet up with that sign but i'm like I, but i'm just gonna go this way <laughs> so I'm like it just seems better so i go through there and like you know doing my i la 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 forest is great look at all the creatures oh hi mr person on the bicycle you're kind of weird why you keep driving past me you're not a serial killer are you you're like you know like i'm gonna swamp shit why did i buy that stick like because i was like the day before i could look on amazon like do i want a walking stick like what if there's a snake 
Like, you want, you know, like, it was like, no, nah. or like, I was like, we're a rapist, you know, and I was like, no, nah, it's fine. Like, oh, I, I don't need to buy a stick to go in the woods. Like, I'll just throw my water bottle at something and run. <laughs> and so, um, so I'm walking through the woods and I'm like, like taking power from the trees. This is what I think was happening. So I'm taking power from these trees, right? And I think what I did is I manifested the snake. I think I was thinking so hard about like about snakes, snakes and like yeah. getting all this like tree power that I was just, like, I made the snake appear. <laughs> like, because it wasn't a rattlesnake. This snake was black and it was big. Like it was like fat and it was like, it was moving and I was just like, what the fuck are you? And I just like leapt over it. Like, I, like it was a hurdle. <laughs> I was just like, what is this? Uh-uh. And I ran, and it was fifty feet on the other side of that, like watch yeah, out for snake sense. side. And I was like, "What the fuck? Like you don't have to be literal side. Like, like did you really be like there's a snake right there? That's what. Yeah, that's a little different. There's not, it's not like an arrow says snake here. That's not what the sign said. Like in a cart, you know, like in a cartoon, <laughs> snake right here, right here, sign snake. Yeah, and so but th- it was at the end of my day. Like I spent like four lovely hours walking, through, like getting getting my nature on and having deep breaths and like with the woods and yeah. And I just ran to my car and I like locked it, locked the doors. So I just like looked like, are there snakes in this car? And I just like jumped in. Like like I heard something like in the trees above me. I'm like, ah! it was a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> but um oh yeah God. so i don't know like if like if that helps my anxiety at all like i said i think i said to you like you can see in my heart rate monitor like the, snake, like the spike <laughs> the spike of it and so like that chick who was like i saw a bear and then i was fine it was no big deal i'm like no i saw a snake didn't work i said no i i, I don't want to see it anymore I, i'm good i'm good yeah <sighs> so that was that was my day, just like full of mm. full of snakes, huh? Or a snake? I don't know. I feel full of it wasn't full of snakes. That would have been much more upsetting. To be fair, to be fair here, like I think I would have broken up in nature. <laughs> nature and I would have we would have split. <laughs> I would just become a city girl, and yeah, I'm like concrete live, jun- concrete jungle for you. We're living it. We're living in an apartment where all I had to worry about is toilet rats. And maybe toilet snakes. That doesn't help anything. Damn but it. you can look in the toilet for those. I mean, like That's that true. panic attack. And they're unlearned, and they uh, are less common. Toilet snakes know, are not as common can, like, as wood snakes. They could come up while you're sitting there, though. Well, this is the story of how Liz doesn't go to the bathroom <laughs> without stressing out anymore. Never go to the this bathroom season. ever again. <laughs> ever again, just, just never in a, go to the bathroom. No, just again. a bucket. <laughs> Because that solves the problem, right? Like, they can't right. get through the bucket. And then you just dump the bucket in the toilet, and then you're fine. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that is how to snake-proof your life. Snake-proof your life. <laughs> I'm going to have to buy you, like, that snake, what is it, snake repellent that you put around your house? Oh, oh. lordy. I mean... I mean that I'm moving out to rattlesnake land. I really am. I know. I'm like I'm already like thinking defenses. I'm like, what are the defenses I'm gonna need like in each house? Like, of course, it's like I am building a gun room in my house if I can afford it, and nobody will know where it is. However, like I was thinking that machetes are better snake weapons. Mm. Yeah. That's, so that's I fair. think I just may get a bunch of machetes. They're a little small. You have to be a really good shot with a. Well, I mean, none of I have a shotgun. Yeah. I would use a shotgun for a snake for the most part. Yeah. And just you know, or a very really heavy load if I was far away. But yeah, like more, most snake problems, I would. But the thing is also like I know there are good snakes, right? And there are. When we last had like a family ranch and there was like a giant motherfucking rat snake and he was just hanging out underneath the duck pretending to be a rattlesnake. And I think, I'm sorry, Mr. Snake, that you should die because I think you're a rattlesnake and you're pretending to be one. And that is on you. You're still a snake. And 
you know, I, I know you're good for the world. Just move on 10 feet. Just like, you gotta go. Yeah. Like, just gotta go or 10 early and you gotta go 10 feet. Let's just. Not, not on the deck. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not like, are we, you know, we've got a mutual friend who is like, she is petrified of like snakes, like wherever. But I can walk through, for the most part, like snake farms and enjoy like the reptiles and be like, oh, look at the snake, you're cute. And, you know, sneak talk, like, I, you know, like, I don't, in captivity, for the most part, I'm fine, as long as I know where they are. I'm not like, but I don't want to like, I don't want to have them in my home. I don't don't want to have them in my home. And I like, I mean, not on purpose. And, um, but I definitely don't want them sneaking up on me. No snaking. No sneaking snaking. No sneaky snakes. No sneaky snakes. snakes. No nope's ropes. You got way more exciting stories than I do today. So. Yeah. Mine's just work's been busy. But you did mention potentially needing a walking stick instead of just chunking your water bottle. And I did get the walking stick that I bought as a small child at Scarborough Fair um, from my parents' house this weekend. You will finally have a a use for it. It has a it has a unicorn carved into it. That's amazing. So you went to Scarborough Fair. As a child. I've only been I've been a few times in my life, but like the ongoing joke in my family is like, what a dork I am, which is fine, whatever. But at the same time, I was like, y'all act like I went like every year. Do I have friends that work it? Like I yeah. know fucking Scarborough Fair dorks. God bless you. Now I'm not, not a knock. I'm just saying it's a thing. No, yeah, we but, have friends who are way more into this stuff than you. Like, like, and they're, my, they're like, of course you did. I'm like, I've been three times in my life and I was with my family. One of those three times, like this isn't like a thing. I don't know what to tell you guys. It was pretty funny. That was about it. That's about all. Celebrating my parents' birthdays and um, yeah, oh, that's took fine. it easy because I because work's been fucking insane. Yes, but yes, you right. have been overworking yourself. Well, what happens when you overwork oh, yourself? I'm almost there. I'm almost done. I know you get you get sick like I am, <laughs> but it'll be all right. You do. All right. So yes, but. What do we do to remedy that? We rest, we take care of ourselves. And we get ready to go on vacation in a couple weeks. Yes. Hey, yeah, I'm like, I'm trying not to stress about, like, I was like, will I even be able to relax during vacation? I have gotten, like, they have, I don't know why I'm saying, like, so much tonight. I'm sorry, I'm just very tired. And that's just what happens when I'm tired and stressed. I, get, I, I rely on things. But um, there is a, like, have you seen the good patches? They're just like nicotine patches, but they are filled with weird herbs and potions. Potions. And, and no. I, I don't know like exactly what like, I'm like, I only want to eat some organic fruit, but I'm going to slap this weird like patch, patch I mean, crap. Yeah. I mean, like it says it's got ashwanga <laughs> in it. Whatever. It seems fine. So like the, it's like a nicotine patch, but there's a relax one. There's a good night mm. one. There's one for hangovers. There's right. one for energy. And so the relax, I've tried the relaxed one and it actually was just like, it was, you know, not like, you know, like gummy, like edible, like relax, yeah. but like, you know, kind of just like I took a nap sort of relaxing. So, oh. uh, I don't know if it's, and if it is like a if it's like a, what's the word looking for? Placebo. Placebo. It was a placebo effect. Fuck it. Like, I'll, I'll take, take it. it. I'm okay with a placebo effect sometimes. I'll own it. That's fine with me. Yeah. I mean, it feels like it feels like something is happening on my wrist. I, I could just be getting cancer, but I feel like something is happening. Or a rash. There. Or, <laughs> yeah, it does, like, when you just want to take it off, it leaves some some things. But, like, no, it's, like, free. And, you know, it's, it's fine. So I may take some of those oh. to Mexico with me. There you go. Uh, are you ready okay yeah so yeah we have spent way too long on this intro and yeah. sorry guys but you know s- sneaky snakes sneaky so snakes. we are talking about season eight episode 17 goodbye stranger and that's a thing about a song blah blah it first aired march 20th 2013 then was directed by thomas j Wright, and we last saw him when when season eight this season eight episode four bitten and also way back in season seven episode 15 we fill me in and this was written by robbie thompson speaking of you know fair things because he wrote larp and the real, real girl he does all our charlie stuff he also did bitten with thomas j Wright, so they have paired up together before 
So we start off with this recap, and it's just like Meg and Cass, they're all like going at it, it's hot. And we got Crowley and Naomi and the Angel Tablet and yeah. the trials. And I decided that I need it, like, and we'll, we'll hear some suggestions that I came up with this, but I hate Naomi so much that I decided that I needed mean nicknames for her. Okay. So I try some out as we go through this, but feel free to, you know, try, try out some of your own. Okay. Well, our episode opens with Dean gun drawn in, oh, a fucking abandoned warehouse. Ta-da! Um, At least you don't have to wait for it. It was just like right off the bat. Yeah. And he's like, like clear in the room and then he gets hit, but it's Castiel. And then Castiel stabs him. What the fuck is happening? Yeah. And he like breaks his arms and then you're like, wait, is this a set? I don't understand what's happening. Because the lights turn on, Naomi strolls right in and then comments positively on Cass's lack of hesitation and says um, things are back in order and Cass is ready. And we zoom out and this entire warehouse is full of dead Deans. Yeah, so Naomi has, of <laughs> course, been <laughs> making him stab teeth. This is, you know, like, but also, like, what the fuck are you doing, Naomi? Like, I don't understand. I also don't understand how there's so many Deans. Like, why is this CGI? Or I would like to think there is a bunch of people that are like, we're going to pretend to be Jensen Ackles. Can you imagine the, how, yes. like, amazing that would be? I'm going to say they zoom out on this, and at first you're like, oh, shit. And then you kind of start looking at the bodies, and it's kind of hysterical, and that sounds morbid. But they're, like, in, like, really kind of, like, goofy dead poses. Like, I say that not... You know what I mean, yes, right? No, we're, like cartoonish we're dead humor, poses. Like, this is, yes, yeah, this is super it's natural. fucking funny. Yes, the, yeah. the the way they are, you know, positioned or shaped, and, and the look on the face, yeah. and like all that. It's yeah, I ran. I did. Sorry, I didn't have a ton of time to like deep dive. And I ran through Google searches and could not find anything on this. But mm. I, whatever it was, I, I think it was fucking brilliant. So we act, we go to where Dean actually is, which is in the bunker, and he's pulling out different artifacts from the storage of the Men of Letters, and Dean and Sam is researching on the laptop, and they're on this really cool backlit map table. Yeah, the bunker is before. the fucking shit, right? And so during my therapy like my, my place is very mindful and i was like go to like we we're doing like breath work they're like go to like a safe space it can be real or imaginary and i think going through those boxes like in this room like that's my new safe space i want to be there like all oh, like i've just got this fear of destiny like just sitting here like so. sure. well he's opening and sniffing the inside of a faberge egg Don't which seems questionable things. Well, while Sam coughs up blood and hides it, but Dean calls him Doc Holliday, which is interesting. Yeah, and how is Val Kilmer so hot? Is like Doc Holliday even with consumption? Like he should that shouldn't have been attractive. And I know he's not always attractive, but even then, just like I wanted to bang a tuberculosis Doc Holliday. I don't. No one blames you. Uh, Most of us do too. but Dean does happen to find in this this pile of artifacts a vintage um, first edition voluptuous Asian lovelies magazine. Yeah, so we get some 1940s Asian fetishization going on. That's great. And Sam asks what we're all thinking, which is, what the fuck is wrong with you? Well, yeah. But, oh, well, we've got... Um, by the way, this map is really cool. It's got all these rings and protractors on it on this table map. They zoom out really good in the scene. You can see it, and I really like it. But either way, yeah, Sam has I think, discovered. You know, like, I, I, I am used to. It, I, I like that you're discovering it for the first time. You know, it's like discovering the you know, what was the fucking hall in in Harry Potter land, right? Like just going going to that for the first time. Yeah, like when you see Hogwarts for the first time. Like, yeah, I'm right. so tired. Um, so, uh, Sam's like, Hey, I found dead bodies showing up all over the place with these severe burns around their eyes, hands and feet and puncture wounds through the backs of their hands and their internal organs liquefied and their eyes. I said, yeah, burns around eyes. The eyes and internal organs are liquefied. So they had burns around their eyes, but their eyes themselves are also liquefied. 
Ew. Just to complete the picture, you know, because I wasn't gross enough. Like, I wanted to make no, sure you knew that, you know, that that was also something that happened. In the puncture wounds through the back of the hands, though, I think that's a really weird, specific Well, thing. they do it. You see it later in the episode. So that's what's interesting yeah. about it. And I thought that that's a really distinct marker. It also has, I think, I'm wondering, my, my first thought was a... Chupacabra? A loose reference to the stigmata. Not a chupacabra. Not a chupacabra. Okay. That's, that's, that was my first thought yes, when I heard I about know, the same hand hands. They say puncture wounds through the backs of the hands. Yes. But then you, I think about like, or, you know, also just maybe crucifixion things too, because yeah. that could also go through there. Well, crucifixion or stigmata was where I'm yeah. like, my, I'm like, ooh, that's my brain. Or but. like, so if a chupacabra, if it's, you know, like front legs, like if they were like, because I always kind of think of them sort of like prairie mantos like. So if they were like very like I don't think they pokey, are. then they can go <laughs> and go through the hands. Maybe. Is it sad that I would be totally pokey. okay seeing a chupacabra, but not a sneaky snake? <laughs> yes. Alrighty. So So either way, they're they he's they need to go there's no link between these victims, so they gotta go suss out what the fuck's going on. At this point, Dean does discover the bloody napkins. So now he knows that Sam is coughing up blood and lying about it. That he is like somehow like transported himself to the 19th century and gotten some Dickensian tuberculosis. That is clearly what is happening here because nobody coughs up blood to fucking tissue anymore. It's so old school. Don't that. I hope not, at least. So, at least that's just to me, that's always like, that's my movie reference, right? Like, if I see, like, yeah. <laughs> like that is. They got the consumption. I have the consumption. She's got the consumption. She well, must go to a sanitarium, <laughs> oratorium. I don't remember which one was which. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. We're going to go so, to the Morton house. <laughs> we're going to go to their house. And Ooh, we've got our, this widower who they are talking to. And he's like, yeah, you know, I already answered all the questions. But the one thing I kind of left out was that my wife wasn't really herself for the last week or so. Um, she kind of stopped sleeping and eating. Okay. And then let me just show you the basement. And uh, he talks about how she would just like mutter to herself about an orchard. And we get down to the basement and it is a craft... I don't even know. I, I was going to like, how do you, it is a mini, it's, it's the, a town model. It's a town, it's know, a town model, like, but it's like, like it kind done, of made with found objects, like in right, various, it, it is amazing. It is, but it's kind of like what you know, is done in Beetlejuice. And it's just yes. this very rare thing that's done except for like Halloween villages, maybe Christmas villages, but this miniature representation of an actual town for some reason is so delightful. It's a little kooky. It's so kooky because it's and also little got bags of dirt everywhere. Hanging over it. Because apparently she, he followed her one night and found her digging in the playground. And that's where she was getting these little bags of dirt. These little bags of dirt are hanging all over this model of town. And uh, when she would dig, she did this all over town. She would dig 10 to 15 feet straight down. And also and she didn't never break a sweat. sweat. So clearly she's a witch because she's not sweating. And like, if I just did like three like little pumps, I'm sure like just like covered, drenched in sweat. <laughs> but I think she wants to compete with, you know, the boys in the Olympian digging contest, right? And also sure. she had no permits. What would have happened if she had just like hit like a bunch of gas pipes? Like, we don't know. Like, she's just like digging in people's yards. No. Oh. Digging all As over town. As we clearly learned that and... everything else has changed, right? And so I'm sure she's just like, yeah. that's a gas line. That's your Google Fiber. You know, I mean, now you don't get out and people like can't work. Like, way to go, Anne. <sighs> so stressful. Well, he tried to confront her, I mean, but she was on the phone. And it, But he said it wasn't really her. And he saw her eyes turn black. And he must, he must have imagined it, he told himself. But he went to the bar and drank a bunch. Came back and found her dead. And so and he think, blames well, himself because he should have stayed with her. Which is sad, but also like, oh shit, my wife's got black eyes. I'm going to go get hammered. Seems like a fair response. Well, if you but, just think you're like seeing shit, like what the fuck is wrong with me? I don't think hell? he thought he was seeing shit. I think he, like, she, and she'd been so fucked up. But then you have to like deal with all of this shit, like hammered. 
So he comes back and Anne is dead and he's drunk as shit. You are not going to make good decisions. I mean, you will probably sober up fairly quickly, but Mm -hmm. at first things are going to go wrong. And how do the cops just like, how do you explain this to the cops? I don't know. There's nothing. I don't know. So they're like, hey, this is uh, Dean outside as they're leaving. And Dean's like, what's well, kind of awesome ah, that someone else is killing house, demons. Though. This house, though, it's amazing. It's just like this weird Victorian craftsman. It's like yeah. green with a red brick. And then it's got like this nice little like off-white, like kind of orangey trim. It's so cute. Yeah, and he's just stoked someone else is killing demons. and But they're like, but also, what kind of demons dig in all these holes? So they Where go are the visit. diggers? What are they doing digging? Like, they can't, like, what? Like they don't understand how to dig. They should see. No. We are sh- I will show them. We're the them. pros, man. So, so the they're going to go. Down. Like, what the fuck are they even doing? So they're going to go visit the person that um, uh, was on the phone with um, with Anne. So they go, and this woman answers the door in curlers. They introduce themselves as um, special agents Lynn and Tandy, which is a reference to Yellow, the band. But um, who's Yellow? Uh, Electric Light Orchestra. Uh, I don't know who that is. Am I supposed to know who that is? You're not missing out. Are they a classic rock band? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And she's like, look, I'd never met Anne before, but she called me looking for an original map of the city, looking for this old orchard. But the town had been wiped out by a river and a flood, and then they rebuilt, blah, blah, blah. But I'm a PhD candidate. This is my dissertation. And here we go. Let's, let me show you my cool, cool recreated map of town. Her, I just her, discovered her the location. Poor professors. Oh, oh my, my gosh, God. So There's, you can you imagine me in this, like having, like being this lady's, like whatever you call that, like. I can't remember what it's called, but the person she has to, well, the whoever person that she's like, like giving off a shit to, right? And then and you know everyone's probably like, oh, it's Wendy, Wendy. Well, but she's, she's like, well, Anne never met again. up with me. God damn it, it, Wendy! No one wants to see your map. Well, Anne never met up with her because Anne was dead. But apparently, Anne's assistant called about the map, and then there's a knock at the door. She's like, oh, there they are. But Anne didn't have an assistant. It's just three demons. Yeah, Anne's and... assistant's a bunch of demons. Yeah. So she screams, and this lady's house gets fucking destroyed. Poor Wendy's house. They are throwing people through the glass door. But why is there that glass door? And I know, like, I'm also just looking at a lot of features and houses because I'm you know, thinking about, you know, Britain dating. But why would you do say- that? This seems stupid. Well, sometimes you want a division in a space to make a, a defined room, and you need to keep things separate sometimes. That just like seems someone, an opportunity for to like to walk in into doors. to break things. Like that thing has to be cleaned. It's going to get fingerprints all over. This seems like the dumbest idea ever. And then I know Dean someone that literally theater. just put in some lovely glass doors on the interior of their house just now, like recently. Really- yeah, this, it's, I'm <laughs> sure they're pretty until someone's drunk ass falls through them. <laughs> Or a demon's fight. Or a demon fight. That's just what it happened. Or they're gonna like well, they're gonna ruin your coffee table. They just get thrown into that too. Well, they we're getting some cock smoke out. We're getting some fighting. We got all the shit going on, and then Wendy gets a demon in her. And Castiel shows up, smites a demon, and then has Wendy by the curlers. It's by the curlers. Which is not a metaphor for anything. <laughs> No, the, not by the curlies <laughs> by the curlers so he puts her in a de- and then he puts her in a demon trap so we never say like, does can as an angel can he just be like poof i have a demon trap i don't know apparently don't know. he did right but he's like there so this is the first time they've seen him in a long fucking time and he's like by the way, we're going to interrogate her. Yeah, um, I'm not going to answer about how I've been. I am going to tell you that I did hear Dean pray to me, but I've been hunting demons. So, and we get this, this is where this starts in this episode. And I kind of don't love it, but I get what they were doing. Nope, we get, we're like, we're popping back and forth in Cass's um, consciousness. To Naomi. Yeah, real to, time heaven. To, Na- to, Na- to heaven. Yeah, and it's real, it's, so it's, it's like a coaching. flashback. It's like a flashback to like Elon Musk's room. So we're going to Tesla headquarters, just like right and left, and it's super obnoxious. Also, it just means more Naomi every time we're there. Yeah, and she's like, tell them the truth, just get them closer. But and we also, like, oh. like, so some other things, so character things, there's, I think we, we saw during this. So Sam is 
kind of surprised that Dean was praying to Cass, right? Oh, yeah. He didn't know, like, Sam's like, what? Like, why were you doing that? And so we have that part going on that I think is really interesting. And also the boys just came in so hot to Cass. It was, they're automatically in fight mode with him. Like, there was nowhere for that to, you can tell I'm spending a lot of time group therapy. God damn it. But there was nowhere for that conversation to go but to, like, a fight land. Because they're just like, with the foot cast, like, where you been? Why are you lying? And he's just like, I got, I've got Wendy to deal with. Fuck off. Yeah, but I kind of get where they're coming from. Like, well, of course he's they're... ignoring them forever, and then all of a sudden he just pops in, and it's like, what the fuck? Well, I, been... I, mean, I, I do not know how, oh my god, so, like, I can't handle somebody, like, calling me without having, like, a plan in advance, like, much less, like, popping into the middle of a fight. Oh my, no, no, thank yeah. you, sir. Hard pass. Well, he's like, yeah, I'm searching for the other half of the demon tablet, just like you guys are, of course. And But I found out, Crowley found that he, Crowley's sending demons to locate Lucifer's crypts, and there's dozens of them. And then now, that's all kind of true, kind of. But then he starts lying and says that there's some fucking parchment to decode the yes, it, tablet without also, the prophet. Sam wants to know why they are doing storage wars. And I also want to know like why and how and where and what they're finding in Lucifer's crypts and what the storage wars is going on. Something are they said. bidding? Are the demons bidding against each other? Like who is there as a host? What channel? What platform is this on? Because I would really like to watch Lucifer Crypt Storage Wars. Thank you. Yes, please. Well, he's like, oh, well, the crypts have been lost, and it's just, you know, he's been doing strategic possessions to get information, and Castiel's like, fuck this, I'm gonna go interrogate Wendy. I don't need to talk to you guys anymore. So, um, we get Sam and Dean have our, their exchange, and I like, Dean says, he puts the ass in Cass. Yes, and he also called Wendy the strange hair demon, which I do love. But Sam's also pretty much just a version of, like, if you love him so much, why are you marrying him? But, like, if you hate him so much, why are you praying to him? And then we get this very funny exchange from Cass, who was just like, you know, I can hear you. I'm a celestial yeah. being. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which is a so... very good point, That it also sucks. Like, why can you just ne- never talk about him? Yeah, I guess not. He can always listen in if he wants to. That's unfortunate. But anyways, so we go, they decide to join him in the kitchen and where Demon Wendy starts talking about how much Wendy liked Sam and Dean, especially Sam and his smutton chops. Smutton chops, which is a great word I think everybody should use. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but she's getting questioned and, um, She's like, she's just talking shit mostly. And that's where she gets her hand stabbed. So now we know where this hand stabbing comes from of these dead people. And, um, but that's basic- just str- that is just stressful, right? So, like, he stabs her in one hand, she just screams, and then she says that they have one of Crowley's pets in a motel. And then I can start, is it a pupper? Like, we don't know. Like, is it a hellhound? Mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe. And then she's like, I saw all, the-, and then like, she's like, I saw all the crypts back in the day. I'm right. Wait, hold on. Well, the, she said the, the hostage had seen all the crypts back in the day. And that's why this person was is being held there. So and Sam starts to ask about the parchment, which Cass made up. And the demons were very confused. And what and, parchment? And, and there's nothing worse so, than being tortured and someone's asking you about stuff that, like... Something you don't know. <laughs> and so we, the demon's really confused and is talk, starts talking about the crypts again and starts to say something about tablets. And Naomi tells Castiel to kill wendy so he does and that makes the boys what the fuck because clearly that's what you do well but they were also like she was about to give more information they thought and they were very confused but he's like no she told what she needed fine let's go i've started this hunt without you and i don't need you slowing me down and he just flops away and he's like i've got to get to the motel now and dean and sam are like what the fuck is happening we gotta leave i guess and they just like run out and they're like they jump a baby and they go and Cass is already on a smite page yeah He's already like smiting all the fucking demons in this motel room, hotel room, excuse me. But they um, they get in there and guess who's locked in the bathroom is a very bloody, a very beaten up, a very blonde, and very blonde Meg. Yay, Meg! Yay. That big fat bitch Meg is back. That bitch Meg is back. 
and yeah and yes we learned that the hair was crowley's idea and it's one of the reasons she wants to stab him in the face yes um and basically she tells them that she does have this knowledge of the crypts she visited them with with yellow eyes with ye and so she used that knowledge that she has as as leverage to get like not tortured basically she was well, and, just, and to drag it out right to make sure that she wasn't going to fulfill her usefulness and get and get killed and well so- she's she gave the real crypt info to get out of torture and then now the process of finding the crypts she is giving false info or just just all not incomplete info to drag this process out to make this take as long as fucking possible to try to locate these and um so Sam's upset. He's like, wait, so all these innocents have been dying just so you could buy some time. And she's like, hi, I'm Meg. I'm a demon. Oh, this is who I am. And also, duh, she wants to live. And so then we cut to back to Tesla and Cass doesn't want to kill Meg. Right. Which is very sweet. Mm mm. And, um, cause she's like, yeah, we got to find this fuck. She's like, she says something about the angel tablet and that's where it's like rut row. Cause Naomi and Castiel don't want Sam and Dean knowing that there's an angel tablet. That's what this is about. And so, and gross Naomi doesn't want to work with a demon because it's unclean. Mm. Hmm. 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 So either way, they're gonna figure it out castiel's gonna play dumb but um but dean's just unconvinced that this is yeah, all yeah he real. just he, he's but, not lying well and he never has no. lied well because he doesn't mm-hmm. understand human emotions enough or pop culture or anything to effectively lie but meg points out that they should probably get the fuck out of this hotel room now that all these demons are dead because somebody's gonna come looking for them so they go real fast to go visit Anne's town model because they think that's a good place for meg to show them where they should well, she needed a map, and so th- this was a good choice. Instead of a map, like we can just have a town model there, and that does seem to be an effective use of of that town model. Also, thankfully, they let her wash her face. They and, do finally, and she's just nice like, "This is where the crypt is," and I, I it just sounds adorable. They're just like all, and I think that's what makes this town model extra special, and why I like it is just there's so many crypts. Well, she's going to point out where the crypt is. Sam and Dean are going to research and discuss Castiel lying while she has a, a beverage. And um, we've got Cass, Cass and Meg sitting there. And Castiel's like wrapping her wounds while she's sipping from a whiskey bottle. But can he not Can he not heal her wounds? She's a demon. so And she's been tortured for over a year. So sometimes but he she's does in a meat have suit. power. She is in a meat suit. But sometimes his power is stuff. But he also, she does ask him, you know, do you really do, after he tells her that her wounds have festered, that he really knows how to make a girl's nethers quiver. And he says he does. And I love them. Yeah. Well, and she's like, which cast are you now? Are you the original make and model or crazy town? And he says, I'm just me. But he also insists that he remembers everything, which I think was interesting. Yep, and so, he, and he remembers everything, including the pizza man, and it's a good memory. It really is, and that's all hot. And he also like he's also been just saying that his noodle works, and yeah, that's not necessarily truth. Not necessarily. And so, well, in the meantime, Sam is figuring out that this crypt is shockingly below an abandoned building. Um. <laughs> I just want for once, like, like, look, it's underneath this fucking McDonald's. It's going to be real messy to get in and out, guys. But we'll make it work. It's fine. But it's really busy. It's it's at the fucking breakfast lunch, uh, bre- bre- breakfast l- rush time. Do you want to pay for all the extras and the, like how just all the kidding. extra I stuff know. it takes to film in a place where there are people? I know. <laughs> I know. I know. And it's just, it's just I know. It's just funny. Um, yeah. So either way, Meg's talking to Kat still about how and she asks if he misses the apocalypse. You cannot just b- b- pass us. All right. So while uh, they are talking about what's underneath Diana's vacation home, 
Dean wants to know if they can trust Meg CL. Yes, they said it. They used it. They shipped Cat Meg and Castiel, and they 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 made the name for it. And I just, I love the show that they just embrace their shit so like so hard. Like that's amazing. Okay, so now well, we can go speaking back. of Meg Steel, yeah, so they back are to discussing Meg, Meg pounding liquor. <laughs> She's pounding that liquor and is con- asking if Castiel misses the apocalypse because everything was clearly bad or good. It was easier, and things are so messy now because she's kind of good and that sucks and he's kind of bad and that's hot yeah that's kind of hot and and so. she's not wrong but it's so like she is so like she's getting her flirt on and she's like you know if we survive this we are gonna bang and Cass is kind of confused but also not does not seem opposed to making my and I just want poor Meg to like at this point get her cast right but then dean just kills the mood like he does well and then back in the motel in the hotel room where they rescued her from our our the remaining demon enters with the map and he sees the other dead demons he calls his boss which we know is crowley and's like hey look i searched the site that i found on the map but it it was empty there was no crypt um and meg's you know meg's gone now and uh i'm kind of solo here so crowley shows up up. oops boss sorry man crowley big mad and so he kills the demon yeah he's mad because he lost his favorite chew toy which is a terrible thing to call meg but he also looks really spectacular in that suit then we cut to the four of them walking down the street all reservoir dog style and meg is so short or just compared to them and then i was just like how my god how would i look like in between the three so now like unfortunately i think most of those things are sold out at the next at the next creation entertainment convention that we'll be at in austin i don't know what we'll be doing there but we will be at there and yeah so but i mean most of those things sold out and are like 300 dollars <laughs> wow but yeah i, I do want i kind of just want to have a picture in front of all three of them just so i can be like i want to know how short i look that's funny yeah so dean's like all right me and castiel are gonna go in sam and meg stay outside and sam does not love this plan at first but dean calls him out about seeing the bloody rag in the trash and then um and that and that basically he hasn't been fined since the first trial so meg's like i want to know what what you're talking about these trials and they saw in unison say shut up meg yes also i some in super in the wiki they're like yeah it's like in like a shout out to family family guy oh oh yeah that is a shut up meg is a family guy thing that's funny all right not that i watch it much I've it's been it a before. while yeah. And then um Cass Cassiel tells Sam that Sam is not okay and Sam is damaged in ways that Castiel cannot heal. What? So... <laughs> That's a yikes. Oops, oops. And then says that Sam should stay outside and protect Meg because she needs protecting after being held and tortured for over a year. Yikes. And this is where if you haven't caught on there's something that's starting to click in that Meg has been tortured for the past year and then start remembering what happened. And so like eventually like I think it starts to click in through this, but it's just something that everyone just kind of forgot, right? Like we just kind of forgot about Meg. So that's why I don't keep pulling from this. So Dean gives Sam the demon killing blade and he takes off with his boyfriend. Yeah. And they go inside and Dean's trying to ask Cassiel what he meant about Sam. And he's like, oh yeah, it's something on like his subatomic uh, levels. And it sounds like something sold, like know. Gwyneth Paltrow talks about, right? Like, oh, goop, like my goop, subatomic shit. levels and my electric monic fields are out of balance. So I put this crystal up my nana and now I am all, my chakras are balanced and my electromagnetic field is in alignment. Well, in the meantime, Sam and Meg have found a fuck ton of spray paint. <laughs> Where did this all... spray paint come from? <laughs> I don't know, but all of a sudden they've got like 20 cans and they have got sigils all over this fucking building. Also, is there ever like, is there, I want to know if there's like a graffiti task force that's like looking for this tagger that does the sigil all over <laughs> town. 
They're like, this <laughs> fucking tagger, we just can't get him. Anyways, um, all right. So Meg points out, she's like, so I took how many bullets for y'all and you didn't even look for me? What? And then that's where like, I was like, oh shit. And then I was like, oh yeah, Meg, like that, when Dean went to purgatory and we lost him and we lost Cass, Meg also got taken off, right? Like that. Right. It was a, in that same episode. In the same she, episode. She, she, she was she outside. She got taken. And we're all like, just like kind of like, and, but especially Sam forgot about it, right? That's the one. And, the Sam's the one that left. To yeah. be fair, he also didn't look for Dean during that time either. And she probably doesn't know that fun fact. Not yet. <laughs> no. But so, well, like, then he starts kind of picking these things up. But like, it's when I always forget about that. Yeah. She she shrugs, she shrugs and she just calls him my hero, sarcastic. It's good, um, and um, she's trying to like ask him about the the trial and the, what the, what his damage is, but he just basically calls her untrustworthy. And then they have this weird exchange about not weird. It's just it's just a little bit of an exchange back and forth well, about she's, how like, you, she knows him because she's been in him and all that. Okay, so. yeah, and that's weird, right? Because she's been on the inside of him, and that's a strange thing to think about, right? And but deep down, she knows that he wants time away from the demons, and yeah. she thinks that him like spending a year with a chick is lame, and he won't tell her Amelia's name, which sounds like it's a flashback cue, but thankfully it's not. I know. But basically, she's impressed that a chick got him off of hunting. Uh, and that must be a rare creature. A unicorn, so. you might say. Back inside, Sam, uh, Cass and Dean are inside the crypt. And it's a, basically a dusty room full of artifacts that has uh, a fancy box. Mm, and in place. the middle of this, Cass is still reporting to Naomi and wants to know what to do. She tells him to, like, to tell <laughs> him that it's empty. Um, which is the crypt is like this box in this dusty room. And, um, but Cass is like, I can't, it's worded against angels. So I can't fucking take it. So we need him to open it. Yeah, and he's um, trying to tap dance because he doesn't want to kill Dean. Right. And right. So he just, she's like, just tells Cass, he'll just to handle it. So Dean gets the box, puts it on the table, uses this blade to pop it open. And inside is a chunk of rock, which we know encases a tablet. So Dean, so he Dean's like, holy shit. And Cass is like, hand it over. I'm gonna take it to heaven. Bye. And Dean's like, no, 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 no. I want to take it to, go to heaven. heaven. Not heaven. 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 And Cass is like, uh, yeah, sure. I don't know about that though. And he's like, well, I need to take Kevin some supplies anyway, so I can load up and we can just take a bunch of supplies and the tablet to Kevin all at once. No big. And um, Naomi's talking about telling Cass how bad things are going to be if demons get a hold of this. So Cass is trying to reason with Dean and while Naomi is telling Cass to kill Dean. Yeah, Naomi's base is just pressuring Cass like so hard, right? And Dean just asks Cass to be honest with him. And he's like, if, you, if you're just telling me what happened to you in Purgatory, you can have the tablet and be on your way. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, you know, well, but they keep suggesting Sam, Sam and I can just take this and you can go back to find the other half of the demon tablet. And Cass is just not into it. Um, and uh, so Castiel pulls his blade. Yeah, uh -oh. it's so weird. It's so weird. And then we flip from this back to Sam and Meg. And she doesn't understand. So apparently, why... while this is happening, because this is what it implies is that Sam told the her the story. story. Because we jump into this part where she's just like, "Why did you stop after you hit a dog? I don't get it." Yeah, her entire takeaway from hearing about Sam going out to the middle of nowhere, falling in love with Amelia, and living this life Kermit, that's not Texas. Yeah, this, this not this this not hunter life. Her whole takeaway <laughs> is. Why would you stop the car after you hit a dog? Anyway, Hi, she's I'm like, yeah, I heard. But I heard she heard the story. Sad then sadder. Laughed, cried, puked in my mouth a little. I kind of get it. Yeah, there's some, in, like, she's empathizing with him. She is acting very human-like, right? She is, oh, like, yeah. having feel. She is having empathy. Very much a different, you know, that bitch Mag is clearly, has clearly grown. 
I bet you Maggie has grown. She has. And then they've got company. There's more demons coming. Well, back inside, Castiel's really going to beat the flying fuck out of Dean. That's what's going to happen here. He beats the shit out of Dean. And it's like repeatedly <clears throat> fucking knocking him in the face. It is brutal. And in the meantime, we get snapped to Naomi where she's yeah, like. So now this one I have, Nay, oh my God, you're such a cunt. And she like just says, you know, that she fixed him and she aggrandizes. As well, I was also very happy with that SAT word I threw in there. She sure. is aggrandizing while demons are attacking Sam and Matt too. So we have like. Dean's just getting shit beat out of him. Sam and Meg are fighting. And Naomi's just berating Cass and telling him what this, why we need this tablet and how he will hurt Dean. And, um, but Castiel starts asking Naomi, what have you done to me? What have you done to me? And, um, and then he says it out loud in front of Dean. Hmm. Which is and Kat, Naomi's still doing her. There's blood on your hands in heaven. Blah 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 blah. And um, anyways, it's this whole back and forth. Yeah, it's and she's lot. just becoming like Nagomi, right? So Nagomi is just nagging on him, and Dean is just looking worse and worse. Cass is bitch slapping him at this point, just like doing a backhand. It's just oh yeah, it's hard. And to the watch. tablet. And the tablet gets dropped in the midst of this, and the stone breaks away, so we see the tablet itself inside this casing of stone, and we get thunder everywhere. And so even um, even Sam and Meg are aware of this, this thunder, and who also shows up right when that happens? Crowley. Daddy Crowley is here. So we have that happening. Uh Dean tells so this is while well, this is happening and Dean is looking really bad Dean tells Cass that they are family and he needs him and they need him originally though that actually was had Dean saying I love you to Cass and Jensen changed it because he said that the line was not in character for Dean I agree good call um, so in the midst of this, somehow he gets through to Castiel barely and Naomi's still like, it's us versus them, blah, 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 blah. And he, Dean's gasping, Castiel picks this up, this tablet and, um, and, and he's, and he's uh, apologizing to Dean and healing him yep, and- as the tablet disappears. Okay, so yeah, and Naomi also during that, she's also telling Cass to choose, right? And I feel like he yeah. do, right? So he do. Yeah. And he's just going and he's getting his glow up, right? And he's just like glowing and glowing and Naomi is just like, no, no. And he, and then Dean's like, and then he is like, and then everything seems okay. Yeah. And so it seems like Naomi's gone. I don't know. Either way. We've got Crowley outside and he's like, yeah, those sigils aren't going to keep me out forever. And Sam's like, well, just long enough for Cass and Dean to get the tablet and get out. Uh, And yeah, so that points out to Crowley that it's Cass who's the one who has been poking his boys and not in a sexy way. And he has a bone to pick with Moose after what he did to his poor dog. That's right, you motherfucker. What did you do to that poor puppet? goddamn monster. Killing the hellhound. Well... Either way, Meg's like, mm, "Are you just gonna t- ask? Are you just gonna talk us to death?" And Crowley is uh, not thrilled with her. He's there for the tablet, so and he calls he her pulls my whore, and it's very. Yeah, he disturbing. said, "There's my whore." I don't like that at all. I don't like that at all. No, sir. It was weird. So she, he pulls the blade. Meg tells Sam to go save your brother and the unicorn. Oh my god! And then I just started bawling. Like she found her unicorn, and now she's gonna fight Crowley. So she has an angel blade, and Crowley has an angel blade, and we somehow skip this part. Uh, so wait, hold on. Okay, no, let's finish up the Crowley stuff. So there, we skipped, so we skipped, Crowley Dean, asks, we skipped the Dean part that was pretty important. Well, but, so uh, we would. Well, jump. not yet. We've got first Crowley. No, to my no, Meg. no, we did. My notes are in order. Don't don't deny me of this. Before this happened, Cat like Dean begs Cass not to hurt him, and Cass just. Wants and we already to did that, and Cass already healed him. No, we didn't say that. I did. Oh, I didn't say that. Okay. 
Yeah, they already picked up the tablet. Cass heals Dean and apologizes, and Dean's asking what happened, and that's when Crowley shows up outside. Okay, no, I heard that part, but it was a moment. It was a very, very impressive moment. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure that was called out. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, I was like, no, we did that. I was like, hold on, because here's where Meg and and Crowley are talking, and he says. You know, he's telling Crowley's telling Meg, hey, they want to close the gates of hell and that's going to kill all of demons, including us. And then he stabs. But in the meantime, Cass is telling Dean about Naomi and how she's been controlling him since he got out since she got him out of purgatory. But they want to know what broke the connection. And Cassiel doesn't know, but he knows he has to protect the tablet from her and from Dean. So he flaps the fuck out right as Sam runs in. Right. And so Sam runs in and he was like, we now have to like, we have to go after Meg is what they say, but that's not what they do. They run after and Meg is standing up for herself like the bad bitch that she is and she's fighting with Crowley and they just get in their fucking car. Well, Crowley well, he told no, but he told Sam, she told Sam to run. No, no, she oh. told Sam to save Dean and, and her unicorn, but he, like, Sam just, they left her. They left her like they always do. I don't know. It's fucking disgusting. I hate how they treat her. And baby just peels away as body, as Meg's body lay on the ground. Well, they watch, though. Crowley in, in talks, he's talking shit to Meg still, and she, and, and they, she's watching them leave. I felt like she was intentionally buying them time. Do I still think that they probably should have She didn't want to die. Yes. She was buying no. them time. She wasn't committing suicide. No, but she does also stab Crowley in the midst of this. So she fought for herself too. No, that's a, she's a bad bitch, but she didn't want to yeah. die. They left her for the past year. Anyways, okay. That's why we're going to have a quiz now. And I'm going to torture Diana because I'm mad. So someone has to take my pain. And I'm sorry, Diana. You get it. So... That bitch Mag is getting her time and her due. We're going to talk about her in, in the way that I enjoy, which is just talking about stupid knowledge that we will never, ever use anywhere else. All right. You okay. ready? All right. What season did we first meet Mag? I'm going to guess four. No, it was one. We met. Oh, we, Meg goes it? back to season one. Yeah. Wow. So, all right. So, what was she doing when we first met her? Um, was she hitchhiking? She was. She was. What was Meg's favorite way to call home? Oh, blood bowl. Totally blood bowls. What happens to Meg in season one, episode sixteen, Shadow? Is she a thrown into holy oil by Cass? B shot in the heart by a demon? C thrown out in a window by a demon? Or D thrown off a building by Sam? I thought she was thrown out the window. She was. She was thrown out the window by a demon. All right. In season one, episode twenty-one, Salvation. What happens to Meg? Is she thrown into holy oil by Cass? Is she shot in the heart by a demon? Is she thrown out a window by a demon, or is she thrown off a building by Sam? Which ep- which was this episode? This is Salvation. So next to last. She in, okay, in salvation. What's happening is John has a fake cult and he is presenting it to demons and trying to sell it as a real cult. No, oh, that's when she gets shot. Yep, she gets shot in the heart by she, a demon. Yeah. All right. So kind of give you that. All right. In season one, episode 22, Devil's Trap, does she get, she get thrown into holy oil? Does she get shot in the heart? Does she get thrown out a window or does she get thrown off a building? We'll go with building. She does. She gets thrown off a building by Sam. So by power of elimination, what happens to Meg in season five, episode 10, Abandon All Hope? Is she thrown into holy oil by Cass? Is she shot in the heart by a demon? Is she thrown out a window by a demon? Or is she thrown off a building by Sam? We go with A, holy water. She was thrown into holy oil by Cass. Uh, In season six, episode 10, Meg asks Cassiel to keep talking because it makes her meat suit all what? Oh, I don't know. <sighs> Classic lie. It makes her meat suit all dewy. Oh, 
Ew, but also so Ugh. good. Question number nine. In season seven, episode 17, The Born Again Identity, what name does Meg take on at the end? I don't remember. It's hers. Well, she takes on her first meat suit and is called Nurse Masters. Oh, okay. Yes, Nurse. Number 10, so last question. In season 7, episode 23, Survival of the Fittest, fittest, Fit Test, what does Meg do with baby? Oh, drives it through the sign at the... um the creepy corporation that DeGroman runs. She does. We talked about this episode. I kind of pointed it out, so I gave you a bonus. But we also have another bonus. Name Uh-oh. all the actors who have played Meg. If you get all these right, they will make up all of your things that you miss, and you will have 100. Oh, God damn it. I know them if I hear them, and I looked them up before, and I can't. I gave, I can't I gave you. I gave you the cheat, and I was like, hey. I know. I looked them up like 14 <laughs> times. This afternoon. I swear, I read them repeatedly, and I know them, and I can see their faces, and I can see their IMDb profiles, but not the names in my head. Damn it. So bad. So bad. Uh, Nikki. Yes. Oh, so Nikki's Nikki's last. Yeah, Uh, yeah, it's Acox. Yep. Acox. See? It's close. close. Nikki Acox. And then, um, who... Rest in peace. And then um, yeah. this one is. Um, Nothing could uh, be finer. Oh, Rachel Minor. Yep. And technically, that was up? a trick question, though, because there's three. Also, Jared Padalecki, because she well, he Padalecki, was possessed yeah. by Meg in season two, 14. So theoretically, three actors have played Meg. And okay. yeah, uh, RIP to Nikki Acox. Uh, she did such an amazing job on the show. And but Rachel Minor, I know to me, is my favorite Meg. And no, she's amazing. y'all did not do right by that bitch. You did not. Y'all just like she gets kidnapped by so well, they just take her. Well, they but they're also her. conflicted. They're also conflicted because she's a demon at the end but of the she day. Was so they never that, trusted her. They never trusted her, but like so they, she went into battle with it, right? Like you just don't go into battle with someone and have her like go in. She clearly like But I mean they had she kind so, of a deal. She I don't know. So I sacrificed kind of, herself. At that point, yeah, like but she's one of your that. homies. Like I feel yeah. like I feel also it's just like what can in no woman in supernatural ever fucking survive? Like, can we stop like this bullshit, right? Like stop but she was such a one like besides being for all my actors just the character itself like i said meg grew so much and we don't know why there's a weird demon like this is an angel on buffy right she didn't get a soul well, i think it's because she was a demon for so long and then she spent a lot of time on earth yeah. the implication she spent a long that time in together. a meat suit right and so meat yeah. suits can't they can take on their emotions sometimes of their hosts if she they're in there long for enough for a long time yeah but you know, she like she was one of Yi's torturers right and yeah she self-sacrificed her big time and for like these dudes it, who just didn't give a shit about her i just don't think that she was here's the deals i do think that she grew as a character i do think that she had some of those things that she did intentionally but she was pretty and i i kind of believe her when she said that she wasn't doing it for them this was for her bigger picture stuff like she didn't always self-sacrifice because she thought it was the right thing it's, to do. yeah but so she was doing it because it served her as well for her side to whatever if she died for her cause, even if it just happened to be a shared cause in that moment, that was worth it. But to there's her, still I like think. I don't know. There's I feel like there's a certain amount of loyalty she is due, right? From the amount of things she has done in their it's name. Yeah, and she's at least like, what the fuck happened to Meg, right? At least like a, hey, like at some point while you're dealing with all those demons and Kevin, something would be like, oh shit, that one reminds me of Meg. Like something would ha- something would happen over the year plus, right? Because yeah. we have come back from purgatory. We have all this time to be like, oh shit, you remember when we did that thing as Sukor? There was a, somebody else there, right? But whatever happened to her, like, what like wouldn't you want like, it's weird that no one mentions it right yeah, and they're like, just like oh shit no, she, give it that. and she's been tortured for a year like that's messed up and so that's what she has like right before she dies and it's sad well, well, I I, or maybe she felt maybe she felt good that she let them get away with the tablet and crowley didn't get it i think maybe she well 
I think nothing would make her happier than Crowley dying. This is basically her her point. Yes. You know, if they shut the gates, as long as Crowley, anything that keeps him from winning, she's like in for. No, and she knows if they get away with the tablet, the odds are higher that Crowley will suffer. Yeah, well, I'm glad she stood up for herself to the very end, and I feel like she she grew as a person. So, R.I.P. Right. May back in the back in the crypt. Crowley and Naomi are going to face off because they both have found or in this whatever building room full of stuff and they know each other. And also, they, know they just that, left that there. Like, I want that shit. That looks like you can get some money off of that. Right. Come on now. And then, uh, they knew storage that, wars. that's the winner of storage wars. You get all that shit. Demonic storage wars. Mm-hmm. Well, basically they both know that neither has the tablet. They know that Castiel has it and he's going to protect it. And Crowley suggests that he wants to make a deal with Naomi, but she just poofs out. Yeah, she He insinuates, though, that they fucked in Mesopotamia, which does not line up timeline-wise with his background story. So there hmm. is some questions about, you know, what what that meant but also i like that she ghosted him right that's the irish i hate nagomi nahomi nagakunti bitch me um but i do appreciate a good irish goodbye and this was just like a but i couldn't have a flapping skill like that can't that can't be a superpower i have like i will just leave in every conversation so Sam and Dean are driving and Sam's like wants to know what happens and he's like they're trying to figure out if like t- touching the tablet reset Castiel or what. But Dean just it's kind of breaks. He's like, I just can't take any more lies. And so Sam apologizes and kind of opens up about some of the problem. But Dean's like, I can't I you know, I can't do these trials, but I can carry you, Sam, which is a little green. Yeah, you know, I can't carry the board burden for him, but I can carry you. And Sam does call him out on being a Lord of the Rings reference, but Rudy Hobbit always gets a pass. Rudy Hobbit. And Goodbye Stranger by Super Tramp is on the radio. It is. By this point, I was listening, watching the episode at 1.25 speed because I didn't have enough time. So that was going at a, a much higher rate. It was like yeah. having a record, like, you know, that was like a little 45, like a 33. Yeah. yeah, that was what was happening with Super Trip. <laughs> <laughs> well, we flashed back to Naomi's office. Oh, the, so I have one this. last one here. So, uh, may I bet your toes are gross on me? <laughs> <sighs> well, and a woman walks into her office, that, like, it's according to the internet, it's her assistant. But either way, this woman just walks in, looks at Naomi, and shakes her head. And that's it. And they look very distressed. And then we see Castiel on a bus by himself with the tablet, taking a bus across the country. And that's it. That's, that's how he hides. That's how. That's how you hide as an angel. You just go to us. So, do you have any things about the people? Casting couch. It's the casting couch. Were they on that show that time with that guy? Yeah, just a couple quick notes. Nothing to um, we didn't have a ton of char- additional characters in this episode, honestly. So, just a couple folks. Uh, Wendy was played by Jennifer Clement. You've seen her in episodes of X Files, Eureka, Forty Four Hundred, and then she was Dee Dee in the movie Fido, which is kind of like a weird cult art film. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, Mr. Morton, our widower, was played by David Franco. He's been in episodes of ER, uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. 24 arrow and prison break and then he was an assistant priest in end of days um and then naomi's assistant uh was uh, played by Teresa wong who's been in episodes of flash chilling adventures of sabrina um she was in deadly class several times good doctor charmed Supergirl and firefly lane yeah she was awesome in deadly class <laughs> <laughs> the show was only canceled after one season. I wish I had more to have the best punk rock soundtrack. I need to watch it still. So, 
Yeah. So well, I think uh, it's like now you have to buy it. It's like they moved it behind a pay- like again we're behind a paywall. So yeah. So let's get to opinions. I also realized as I had in very big cap letters that Rudy Hobbit always gets a pass, and now I'm just thinking it's like a rude boy Hobbit. So now I just have like pick it up, pick it up Hobbit. <laughs> So oh. Dean just wants to help Sam pick it up, 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 pick it up his burden, and carry you. He wants to have two, one set of footprints Sounds in like the sand. Sounds like a song. It really does. <laughs> it does. It sounds like a ska song. Rudy Hobbit's getting a pass. I'll make Dave oh Rudy gosh. Hobbit for us. Yeah, it was it was a good episode. I really liked having Meg back. That was fun. It's interesting Until having Castiel back. And, well, I know. I just, yeah. Also, like, the blonde thing, like, I didn't dive into it. Like, I'm sure she explained this. Like, was her hair actually blonde, like, for something? Or did they, then they just had to work this into it? Or was it, you know, was it just you, part, actually, of part of the script? Right. Part of the torture? Well, the, she said it was part of the torture. That it was part, that, like, Crowley specifically did this to her and be like, at least he didn't give her bangs. That would oh, be like, fucked up, man. Just, just like, oh no. Un- unwanted bangs. Unwanted bangs. Here are some very unattractive, straight, harsh, blunt bangs on you that you think you can carry off, but you can't. But no, I think you know that was fun to have her back in an episode, regardless of you know how it how it unfolded. But um, I'm kind of relieved that we're potentially getting away from like crazy pants cast because I was kind of getting. Like the, it's kind of a, a lot. I mean, I well, we want to, we there. want to like Cass. We yeah. already had mm-hmm. Cass as angry God, right? So yeah. we have had enough time to be in a, in a negative place with Cass. Yeah. And then, um, and I'm glad that Sam and Dean are finally fucking going to be honest with each other. So there's a lot of good drivers in this, but I think it's a good, um, progress in the story with the tablets right and we have learned that sam needs to get some magnet bracelets because his electromagnetics are just his meridians are just out of line maybe he's gonna find a ley Um, line maybe well that's all i got yeah and what so what episode was this was this 18 17 17 Woo, man season eight that it's there's this the season sometimes like it's so these episodes like this also this is uh i can make a point i swear we are getting close to the end of the season so yeah. there were some arcs i feel like got wrapped up in this like you said right so yeah. we've got at least the boys know about Naomi. Yeah. at least the tri- but the trials we don't know if they are going to be part of this season or next because it is seventeen, and we're pretty late in the season. Pretty for late, that. so we don't know. Like, if are we closing the gates of hell this season? I don't know. I think that was the point of the season. I think that was our our thing, our yeah. goal. So we're at least, you know, we're moving there and, you know, Cass and the Cass and Dean part was really, really brutal, especially, and a lot of people take this really hard, especially with the Dusty L ship, right? But if, but even just like friends, you know, beyond whatever, you know, their family, that amount of violence between them. And the fact that Dean, like, that's, how do you move past that, right? And how can Dean not carry that? You know, I would be so you know Mm. that'd be so hard to process and to to trust Cass after that you know yeah and also how creepy and abusive is it that he can like beat the shit out of him and then heal him and apologize then he could just do it again yeah that's the lifetime movie we don't want to watch yeah I bet that's you know that's that's someplace like the way like the boys could like very creepily go (laughs) don't do that Mr. Kripke I'm just telling Mm. you now all right, so yeah, it was been a long episode, guys. And like I said, sorry, we're tired, but also it's good stuff. So yes. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm not gonna apologize for our content because it's good. No. No. Cheers, Rick. Cheers, baby. Devil's Trap Podcast is a don't get it production. Meow. Devil's Trap Podcast is part of the Ship It Studios Podcast Network. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Devil's Trap Podcast. 
You can follow us on Instagram at Devil's Trap Podcast, Twitter at Devil's Trap Pod, or you can email us at Devil's Trap at Devil's Trap Podcast.com. Don't forget to subscribe, leave reviews, and share with all your friends. We're at all your favorite podcast outlets and at Devil's Trap Podcast.com. I'm Babe. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.